Good evening, everyone. I'm Mary Papazian, president of Southern Connecticut State University, and it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to what I know will be a wonderful, wonderful evening. We are very, very fortunate to have with us Coach Kevin Gilbride and one of the stars of the New York Giants who will answer your questions today and share a little bit about the experience of winning the Super Bowl. What they really bring to us is a belief and a commitment to excellence, to dedication, to doing what it takes to compete, and to doing it in a way that respects the competition and all who work with them. We are very fortunate to count uh, Kevin Gilbride as one of our very uh, successful ALS alums. He was a student here. He played quarterback and then tight end for the ALS football team and is part of the class of 1974. He then went on to coach for us for a few years. And it's our belief after this experience that we are the best training ground for NFL coaches. <laughs> Before I invite Coach Bill Bryant to the podium, I'll use that as a plug to all of you to see you at our football games come September. We have a wonderful football team and a wonderful coach, and they've learned a great deal from watching their predecessors like Coach Bill Bryant. They will give you a great show, and I look forward to seeing you all of, all of you in the stands in the fall. Please join me in uh, offering a warm welcome, a return to Southern, to Coach Kevin Gilbride. Not only, again, a great football player, but a, but a special young man. 
The season began with the prognosticators predicting doom and gloom again. <laughs> All the experts had us, uh, well, they had us basically being fired, and the, bet, the line was, when was it going to happen? At the end of the year or during the course of the season? And we began the year looking like we were going to prove the pundits right. We played very poorly against the Washington Redskins. Uh, didn't do much on offense, defensively did pretty well, uh, but didn't do enough through an interception, a key interception that led to a, them go ahead and they beat us. We came home, beat a, beat a uh, really an undermanned St. Louis team, so we were one and one, but not really sure where we were at as a team, but we went out on the road and we had two terrific wins. We beat two very good football teams. We beat the Philadelphia Eagles at Philadelphia. <laughs> Arizona at Arizona and we scored two touchdowns in the last five minutes of the game to beat the Arizona Cardinals. Now I don't know how often it is that you win on the last drive, but to be able to score two times inside of five minutes at the end of the game is very, very unique. And we did it three times this season. That was the first one. So that, that was kind of the paradigm for the year. It was going to come down to the end. We were either going to win it on the last drive or we were going to lose it on the last drive, but it was going to come down to the last drive, and it did very, very often. We came home feeling pretty good about ourselves. We just completed the first positive streak. We had won three in a row, and we managed to reverse that very quickly by losing to a team we thought we were going to beat, which may have been a problem and maybe one of the negative characteristics of our team. We got beat by Seattle. I don't know if you remember that game. We were driving down to win the game at the end. And Victor Cruz slipped, and the ball hit off his hand, and instead of going for the winning touchdown, it went for 104 yards the other direction, and Seattle beat it. So now we're sitting there at 3-2, and two, but we now put together a nice streak against some teams that were playing pretty good football at the time. We beat Buffalo, we beat Miami. Now, Miami hadn't won a game, but they had played everybody close. Buffalo was 4-1 and one at the time, and then we beat New England. So we beat 3 and two. Something that I, you hardly ever see, but for the 
you know, for the third time that season, we scored two touchdowns in the last four and a half minutes of the game to come back and win, but we actually scored too quickly. For those of you who remember now, we gave them time, and it looked like Green Bay redux. Here they come again, and fortunately we blocked the field goal that would have tied the game, and we won, so thank goodness for that. <laughs> now we come back home, and we, uh, we fall again to the Washington Redskins in a, in a game that we dropped about four big, big passes. A game that we could have easily won, and then we threw it, Eli threw a pick in the, in the end zone. Uh, we just didn't play well, and they beat us. And so, uh, they're, they're, Dan Schneider, their owner, is proclaiming Super Bowl uh, vicariously because they beat us twice. So they're they're very excited about that fact. But uh, we're now seven and seven, and anybody who lives in New York or New Jersey knows what's about to happen. You know, it's Armageddon. We got to play the Jets. And, 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 they have been proclaiming superiority for the last two years, and uh, the fact that they had, they felt captivated the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut uh, media and the, and the fans and everything about them was better than us, and so on and so on and so on. Well, it didn't prove out that they were better than us that day. We uh, scored a couple of big throws. And throws. We had a couple of great runs by Hot Bradshaw. We won going away, which was which was a great game. And, and I give our credit to, to our defense. Our defense really played well that game. We then finished the season with all the marbles on the line. We had to beat the Cowboys again at home. Whoever won that game was going to be in the playoffs. Whoever didn't win was going to be sitting at home watching the playoffs. But we played very well, both sides of the ball. We dominated the game. We won. And we really played well just about the entire year offensively. Defensively, we went through some tough times. But we started to get some guys back at this time. And now we were really looking like a, a, you know, a team that was capable of doing some damage in the playoffs. We started the game against Atlanta. We didn't do much on offense initially. Our defense kept us in it, and then offensively we took off. And the catalyst to that, and those of you who remember the playoff game, was, was the guy you're going to meet later on. And Keen Nick split the defense for about 70 yards, caught about a 15-yard in cut, spun around, made two guys miss, and went to the house. And that got us going. And then from then on, we won very, you know, very comfortably. And we went up to Green Bay, and uh, you know, we, we were dominating the first half. Didn't have much of the lead. Uh, we, we, I was trying to get one more score, and uh, we, we, I threw a pass, we threw a pass, picked up about eight yards, and then tried to get it and got, didn't get it, and they called timeout. So that now, that told me they were trying to block a field goal because there wasn't going to be enough time for them to, to do much with, I'm sorry, block a punt. So I said, well, let's run it, see if we can run outside. They're pressuring us up in the middle. And we, I don't know if you guys remember, but we tossed the ball to Mont Bradshaw. He ran to the outside, cut back across the field, and got out of bounds. And we were close enough now that I knew we could reach the end zone. So we called for one of those Hail Mary throws. And then, again, the guy that's coming out later went up with those big balls.
love to see themselves, so it's a great night for you to show them. But you get a chance, just as I, when I look at that, to appreciate the phenomenal athleticism that our players have and, and, and enjoy the, the great plays that they're physically capable of making. But I also see two other themes that I think characterize this with the difference why we're able to survive the ups and downs of the season and, and handle so easily the, uh, the challenges of the Super Bowl. Number one, it's a very confident group. And uh, first and foremost, if you're going to be confident in New York, the first thing you have to do is be able to block out the naysayers, block out the ones who are telling you what you can and cannot do. There's, there's a saying by Teddy Roosevelt that I'd like to share with you and then just develop a little bit. But it, to me, it, it, I have, I've got it in my office. It's the first thing I see when I come in every morning. And it goes like this. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the one who points out where the strong man has stumbled or the doer of deeds could have done better. It's the one who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly but comes up short again and again. But in the end, he knows the value of great enthusiasm, great devotion, and at best, experiences the triumph of victory. And at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place will never be with those cold and timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. You have to be able to have that ability in New York as a player, as a coach, but I would suggest really to survive and thrive in any industry, business, setting, young person, old person, those of us that can block out those people who want to define who we are, what our ceiling is, what we're capable of doing, you're the ones that all of us need get something done. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. That's what our guys do very, very well. They block that. Out. The second thing is you, you've got to have some, some belief in yourself. You have to have some self-esteem. You have to sense or feel that you belong. You, you deserve. You've earned the right to be in whatever it is that you're involved with. And if you've had some success, it's certainly a lot easier. You know, you've had some success, you expect to have additional success. Because you expected to have that success, usually things turn out the way you want it. Things turn out the way you want it, you feel good about what you're doing, and things kind of continue once you get into it. But there's another way you can earn it, and our guys did that. And I, I would say that we probably do as good a job as anybody with this, is that they, through their commitment, through their preparation, through their effort behind the scenes on a day-to-day -day basis, have earned the right to go into a contest saying, there's nothing else we could have done. We are as prepared as we can be. We've earned the right to go out and let our natural abilities just flow because we've prepared with as much energy and as much determination we put in the time to give ourselves a chance. Yeah. And as much as the desire to win is crucial, as much as having some athletic ability is crucial, crucial as much as the, the mental acuity that you need to have to play, I would suggest and propose to you that it's those people that believe in themselves and give themselves a chance are the ones that really are going to have an opportunity to be successful in life. There's a poem, and I know you're going to say, Wait, where's this football coach going with all these things? But that's how I remember them. That's how I endorse some players. We're always looking for motivational things to kind of keep them plugged in when things get discouraging. As we all go through, trust me, in the season, there's as much up and down as, as you can possibly imagine. But anyhow, it goes like this, and this will speak to it much more succinctly than I can ever possibly prepare, uh, deliver it. If you think you dare not, if you think you dare not, you won't. If you'd like to win but don't think you can, it's almost a sense you won't. For out in the world you find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. Think big and your deeds will grow. Think small and you'll fall behind. Think that you can and you will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You got to think high to rise. You got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. For sooner or later, life's battles don't go to the stronger, faster man. The one who wins is the fellow who thinks he can. And that's this guy that will bring out 88. <laughs> because of that, there is no stage that is too big for him. Because he honestly, genuinely feels he's better than whoever he's going against. And this is just an opportunity for him to show that. That's a magic potion, boy. If you had it, we'd all like to bottle that and and give it to our kids and, and the people that we care about. But this guy has it. He's the personification of it. And that's why when, when, it, when it's on the line, 
you want the ball going to him, and he's always come through for it. But the last characteristic that I think probably was somewhat uh, the most salient feature that we had, or, or attribute that we had, and that was our, our ability to just kind of hang in there. Just don't give up. Just keep playing. Play each play, regardless of how bad it was, how good it was. Let's just keep going. Let's see what it has. And there are many teams that might have packed it in that we, that we were not one of those teams. We just, you know, our resiliency, our mental strength, our, our will, whatever terms you want to use to describe that was as good as I've ever been around. And that's why when all those games came down to it, yeah, we didn't always win them. But we never gave our, we never denied ourselves the chance to win it at the end. And even the ones where we didn't accomplish our goal, it wasn't because they stopped us three and out. We were always on the, we were always in progress. We were always in position, working our way down to get it done. And uh, this will be my last poem, I promise you, but it's one that I think is terrific. And, and, and I just would share it with you because to me it means so much. When things go wrong, as they sometimes would, will, I like to say, as they often do, when the road you're trudging is all uphill, when your funds are low and your debts are high, and you want to smile but have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, then rest. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. For life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us one day learns. And many a traveler turns about who might have won had he stuck it out. So stick to the fight, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with just one more blow. For often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. And often the traveler has given up who might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the line came down how close he was to the golden crown. For success is failure turned inside out the silver tints of the cloud of doubt. You never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you mustn't quit. And that was our team. We never quit.
I love to attend you with the Super Bowl, and I'm happy that you guys won it with the more definitive play and David Tyree's helmet catch last time. But um, I was looking through the the review, the box scores of the Super Bowl, and it looked like you had like the most receiving yards. Were you and Eli kind of like on the same page or wavelength or something during the pregame? Or uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, that kind of came from our we practice. We practice hard that week, and um, you know we took what the defense gave us. Pretty much, uh, we took advantage of their scheme and uh, the coaches, and you know, I was just doing a good job of getting open, and Eli was just reading the defense. I'll just so you know, we kind of. Went into the game, and, and this is not the surge in any way, but quite frankly, we knew that they would not want to match up with our with our receivers. So we anticipated, and these guys knew that you know, we were going to face a lot of too deep roll coverages, and, and really just trying to work they could to deny us from some big plays. And so we're going to have to run the ball a little bit more effectively than we have all year long, and then throw the ball underneath. And really, we led the league in big passes. Not necessarily the best team throwing the ball underneath, but they challenged us, they just do it. And you're right, the team far away has the most passing yards in any game. Receiving yards. Thank you to both of you for all your hard work and for being just a little trophy to the only city, to the only team that matters in New York. Thank you. 
the staff, who does a great job of carrying out our ideas and our thoughts. But with the, within what we do, there's great latitude that we give the receivers. Not everybody can run and have the options and flexibility to do the things necessary to get open that we give our receivers. The problem with that is if the quarterback doesn't read that language the same way or that what's happening defensively, the way the receivers are, they can look awful. You got a lot of potential to look great and, and take advantage of, of weaknesses in the defense, but if you're not seeing it the same way, then uh, then you can have problems. And fortunately, we've got some bright receivers, some talented receivers, and, and Eli gets a lot of credit and deserves a lot of credit, but trust me, it wouldn't be effective if those guys weren't doing their job as well. And that's why when you get together every day after practice, it's one voice, and it's mine. And we talk about seeing everything the same way so that everybody interprets it the same way as they do. There's enough ability for them to get it done. But it's a lot of hard work on their part, a lot of athletic ability, and seeing things the same way. And in fact, you've got a quarterback now that has heard it as many times as some of our young coaches have heard it. It, it, makes, it makes life a lot easier for me, for sure. Okay, I actually have two questions. <laughs>
Jewish Shire team, born and raised in New York. Um, I just got a question. Um, is there any way that you can have, when you eat like scrambles or anything, do Victor Cruz's sauce dance? Can I do Victor Cruz? No, can, can, you, can you have Eli do it? <laughs> Uh, congratulations on your second great Super Bowl victory. As a long time suffering Bills fan, it's the closest I'm going to get to a Bar Trophy. Uh, my question is on the defensive nature. You and Europe, you guys, uh, you gave me permission to see the trade at the beginning of the season. You guys going to uh, resign or are you going to be on the market? Yeah, I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think we know the answer to that the organization, much less. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
out. The giant circumcision great job. Quick question. I know that um, you emerged your uh, year as a great wide receiver. What role did you play in Victor Cruz and Tudelich and him becoming a, a great season? Um, and I know you're close. So what, did you give him advice on what to expect for the year? I don't really know that. But, um, I think when he made his first start against Philly, and I pretty much told him, man, spoke about his, his opportunity to show, show, showcase what he's got, man. Uh, I knew Cruz had talent from the day, first game I seen him play against the Jets in the preseason the year before, and uh, you know, he, he put on the showcase. So, you know, I, I always knew he had talent. So uh, once, his, once his time came for him to step out on the field and play, I knew it was going to be no doubt. Last question right here. I think I noticed that you saw the injury in the first few seasons. I was wondering if it's the same injury or if it's different injuries that keep occurring. And what are you doing in preparation for the upcoming season to prevent that? Um, yeah, uh, you know, I look at it like, you know, injuries something you can't, you know, you can't really fix. They, they just come, you know, as the season go on. It's just a matter of taking care of your body. So, uh, I think to prevent those things, you kind of don't really know how to prevent them. You've got to make sure you stand on top of your body year round. Um, pretty much make sure you get treatment when you need to get treatment, even though it's not in, in season. Still making sure you, uh, you give your body the proper rest that you need. And, you know, when it's football time, you just got to set it up. <laughs> Well, did we enjoy ourselves? How about another round of Thank you again. One more round of applause.